Okay, in this video, I just want to show you what to do with our files if um, if you find that you need a little, just a slight difference in measurement. And what I'm talking about here is this is like the Serona style tie base. Um, you can buy them. Uh, as manufactured from Serona. You can also get them from True Abutment. You can get them from Blue Sky Bio, which is where, where I get them. And they come in some different measurements and whatnot. What you'll see, though, is the chimney, this top portion of it, is identical. They have two sizes, a, a large and a small. Most of your implants are going to have the large here. Okay, So um, in the software, uh, we have cre we have included this APG2 software. We've, created, we've included a large, uh, a regular, and I'll show you what that looks like, and then a mini, okay? And uh, it's important to understand the differences here. So if you notice, the ch the mini is actually um, is actually narrower. The chimney itself is skinnier, okay? So that is a distinct difference. So you need to pick that if you're going to be using the size small chimney. Like if you use the uh, the Ceric blocks where you mill it out, if you're familiar with that, and you have to, in the software, choose small, then you're going to be using the mini abutment, okay? doesn't matter what implant system. I'm going to tell you how to account for the actual platform, which will vary, and we'll get to that in a second. But if you're using the normal one, notice that these two our large and regular are the same. The difference is the margin diameter or the collar diameter, okay? One is wider than the other. And we've de designated it as 500 microns or, or sorry, five, sorry, five millimeters. 500 just stands for 5.00 millimeters. 450, which is 4.5. And that mini is 3.75. Okay, so what the, the what I want to focus on this video is if you have, let's say, for instance, you have one that you have bought and um, here we go. This one just pulled off of Google Images. This call this um, collar. Let's pretend that you take a digital caliper and you measure from one side to the other. Uh, digital caliper being um, one of these guys. Okay, you just take it and you measure it. You can find it on my website under accessories. Uh, sorry. Uh, accessories, 3D printing tools, and at the very bottom there's a link. Uh, you can buy them in the hardware store, Ace Hardware, or whatnot, and they're usually about 15 to 20 bucks. Okay, so again, a link right here on my website. Um, purchase that on Amazon, whatever. And so if you measure the outside diameter, let's pretend it's 5.2 millimeters. Okay, well, if you were to make these little healers the way we have in the software using the 5.0 that we've included well your um your your metal titanium the titanium would stick out an extra 0.1 millimeters on all, all the way around okay so we need to account for that if it's smaller it's not going to be a big deal because you can just kind of polish down the edge of the the resin uh, sleeve that we're putting on it. But if the metal's sticking out, I mean, you could polish the metal back, but you might not want to. It's, it's more work. So instead, if you just take that measurement, let's just say, again, once, to, once again, let's say it was 5.2 millimeters. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the software. I'm going to use it just like normal. Okay. I'm going to find, uh, pick whatever abutments I want and everything. I'm going to locate my abutment. The ones that we included, that 500 one, click accept, click import abutment. And now, like I said, I want this to be an extra 0.1 millimeters all the way around. The total diameter difference is 0.2, 5.2, but the radius is an extra 0.1. So I'm going to come up here to the shoulder offset, and I'm going to change this to 0.1. Okay, That one adjustment, which is the shoulder offset, is going to account for that and just let me watch let me show you I'm gonna click create abutment STLs now what it's going to do is it's going to essentially add an extra point one and then make the abutment according to that okay there is one caveat to this this entire abutment has a spacer the passive gap of 0.1 millimeters or whatever you set that to anything on the shoulder offset will not have that passivity gap Okay, so you're going to see that there's going to, well, you'll see in just a moment here. It has a little ledge here. That's because it is not, uh, there is no passivity gap. So let me back up for a second to make it even more obvious what I'm describing. Okay. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this offset to 0 0.3 instead. 
and now I'm going to go ahead and click the create abutments. It's going to take a little while, but now again, that number is more than we need. It's not demonstrative of what I'm talking about. In this case, that margin would have had to have been 5.6 millimeters for this to make sense, but I'm doing this just for a visual representation of, you know, to make it a little bit easier to see what I'm talking about. All right. So if I look at underneath, there you go. Do you, if you see this part right here, essentially there is a cement offset, a cement gap, the passivity gap we call it, all the way around the abutment, but the little shoulder offset, this part, there's no passivity. So when you put cement in here, there's going to be room everywhere but here, okay? So just go with it, that or you can design your own abutments, but that is uh, just something to be aware of, okay? Shouldn't cause a problem though, just wanted to give you that little heads up. But anyway, so now you know how you can modify the abutment measurements for um, a different Serona style tie base. You can do the same thing for the DES style abutments that we've included, should their diameters vary from the 4. Point, um, let's see what we have 4.5 4, 4 and 4.9. If you find that their margins are slightly wider, again, you should be able to adjust those measurements the same way with that um, shoulder offset. Uh, dimension. All right. Thanks so much. Bye for now.